Hello there everybody, this is the Titan the Gamer Dude here and welcome back to my Let's Play Guide on Resident Evil 6 on No Hope Difficulty. So unfortunately on this part, the person behind the wheel on the plane turned into a Lipo Tiska. And yeah, it's one of these annoying bullet sponges and we are in a much smaller space. And this thing has a habit of just targeting you and unfortunately I went into the wrong space and now I'm just rolling around trying to avoid getting caught but thankfully it is miraculously coming after Helena so I'm taking advantage of this time to spray some ammo into it with my sniper the sniper you know big big damage and then there's free magnum bullets here and as you can see it's sprayed with its freaking C-virus replica in its body the C-virus gaseous replica in its body I'm just going to shoot it with the Magnum, because why not? It eats too many bullets, and I have 32 Magnum bullets. I have some Magnum bullets to spare. And the chopper is also moving back and forth, so it is ridiculously hard to hit this thing in the head. So now it's aggro to me. I'm just going to run around. I'm just going to use these corners as a way to just shoot it and then run. But as you can see, it's being pretty passive right now, but now it wants to come to me. And again, it's miraculously targeting Helena. So now it's going to target me, I'm assuming. I'm just going to come out here and wait. As you can see, it just eats so many bullets, and you can't run during this. So, yeah. I wouldn't advise power shotting it or quick shotting it either. There we go, a headshot. Now that was useful. Coup de gras. It hit me again, but you know what? The checkpoint happens, and at least we don't have to deal with that piece of crap anymore. So, thankfully, there's herbs on this level, and there's, there is one green herb, and one... There's two green herbs, and there's one red herb. So, you get one free green herb, and you get a free mix. Thankfully, though, I have a red herb with me. Ooh, isn't that useful? So now I can keep myself relatively healthy on herbs. And this is very useful. One, two, three. I wish I could damage myself again because this is a red herb. I think there's a green herb coming up or another red herb. I'm not sure. But if I can't get it, I'll just have to get rid of some assault rifle ammo. And there's also a first aid spray. But... You know what? I'm not sure if I'm going to get it. Well, whatever. I'll just use that one. <laughs> because why not? So, what here is going to be gotten rid of? Um, I can get rid of that. Might as well. There's also that some skill points in there to open up. There's also some skill points in there if you open it up. So, there's that. So now after the B prompt, we're going to come in here. And this is where uh, either things are going to go really well or things are going to go sour. So over here, first aid spray, you pick it up. There's another one of these B prompts. You turn the valve, the, you know, trying to stabilize the pressure in the plane. So Lipo Tiska, unfortunately, is going to come back to haunt us. So during this time Philippe is gonna come in run up to this press the A button and immediately mash the X button as quickly as you can and if you can get this done before Philippe Tiska grabs you good gravy as you can see it's targeting me but thankfully destabilized the opened up the hatch before it got to me and that's what you want to do. So now we don't have to deal with that. The gas that releases in that room has a draining effect on your health. It'll slowly drain your health. So here, right trigger, left trigger, right trigger, left trigger, right trigger, left trigger, and then X plus A. Again, you might die there, but if it happens, it happens. Now you know next time you play the game. So immediately keep pressing onward. Thankfully, there's no pump to help Helena or no QTE. We just get in. And we don't even have to walk up to the lever and pull it. 
the character just does it. Stop the plane from crashing. So now everybody on board is a zombie now. And again, we're healthy on ammo, we're healthy on herbs. I try to run at that zombie and there we go. Quick knife that zombie, get my iframes. I tell Helena to, you know, come on. Yeah, I'm not in the mood to deal with these zombies. There's too many of them. And tell her to come with me because I don't I just don't want to deal with these zombies. And as you can see, there's a it makes you stagger, but it also knocks zombies down. And that guy comes out of nowhere. But thankfully, Helena saves me just in time. I did not know that zombie just comes out of nowhere. So I'm going to get up now. I tell Helena to come with me for the B prompt. But there's just too many zombies surrounding by me. I try to roll out of the way, but I get caught again. So now Helena is finally going to come around to pick me up again. So now I heal myself twice. There's a bunch of zombies that I'm trying to get out of the way, but there's so many of them. I get downed again. <laughs> I stand prone, get an herb off. Now I get up. With all these zombies, I learned my lesson the first time. And now I'm just going to spray with my assault rifle because there's just too many zombies. There we go, I get a double headshot. And I'm just gonna get rid of these zombies now. So if you can avoid these zombies, good for you. I get some magnum bullets from my troubles. And unfortunately my health is on the low side, so I'm just gonna mix one, two. I use another one, because having 11 herbs is the most optimal way you can have your herb setups. So you'll be able to combine three green herbs to get six, or one red herb and one green herb, and you'll be able to have space and have healing at the same time. It's called inventory optimization. You can also have some more ammo too. So there's going to be some zombies up here. I just roll to activate that little cutscene. Knocks the zombies down. I can avoid damage. Use my iframes. One zombie gets back up. I try to quick shot the zombie closest to me, but quick shot the other zombie. That's fine. So I'm just gonna quick knife this zombie. And now we go and we operate the plane. Leon gets the privilege of doing this. With Helena, you have to protect Leon. So I think this part can be difficult if you're with another human player, but with the AI, it mostly goes very smoothly. So now we have to take the controls as Leon. And again, just like the car section, but much more climatic. So I'm back. Chapter 4 again. So now we have to press that button right there. QTE prompt. Yep should be A, then we just gotta mash X. I just wish you'd keep mashing A, but okay, whatever. So the zombies can actually stun Leon and stop him from activating these QTEs to stop the plane from falling. And if that happens, death. So now we have to pull up, just mash X. That zombie got really close to me, but Helena is putting in work right now. I'm just smashing the X button, and after that, the cutscene activates with the crane plat with the plane crashing, and even we even get to see Ada. There she is. It goes down. Now we're at the crash site, and now we have to fight the Ustanak, which is basically the spiritual the spiritual successor to the Nemesis from Resident Evil 3, titled Nemesis. It's just Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. He has his own game. How badass is that? Still one of the most durable B.O.W.s to exist. Along with a lot of enemies in Resident Evil 6 and some in other games. Here's the Ustanak. What I do is I immediately just go back and we want to take advantage of these 
canisters because when you shoot these you don't want to be close to them either because you'll be stuck in this animation and you just don't want to be close to them so we want to push these down we're healthy on ammo so I'm just gonna slide down and he has two he has two characters I'm waiting for him to come over here but he's coming after Helena And an interesting thing happens when he is catching somebody. When he's caught characters, you actually want that. But as you can see, he's he's still coming after. I'm trying to tell Anna to come here, but she keeps getting locked. So I can't help her. So I'm waiting for him to run into this canteen because I want to save Emma. But as you can see, he's just goofing off, not doing what I want him to do. Because that's how the Ustanak works. So now he's running to me. I'm going to immediately run up to him while he's stunned. Pull out my knife. And quick knife him. This is really effective. And then again, he's still stuck in this stunned state. So we can just keep quick knifing him. So then Jake gets out. And then he's going to run. And that ends phase one. How useful is that? Only one bullet and we just leveled him with the knife. I'm going to have to do some testing about that with that on Jake's campaign. I'm going to play as Jake too because I want his hand to hand. His hand to hand is powerful. I tried to slide down there but the game wouldn't let me. I'm just going to jump down now. You want to use these too so you can significantly damage the Ustanak and you just save ammo. That's what I'm saying. The knife is really powerful with Leon. People just don't know how to utilize it. You can get here by using, at max, probably six bullets if you're good enough. So I got some more handgun bullets. A B prompt with Sherry. Just gotta mash the X button, open it up. And then after that, we have to reroute the engine. But before we can do that, another B prompt. And now we have to press the X button at certain times in order to get it to work. We succeeded without no struggle. That car can kill you if you're playing with other characters. And if you don't get out of the way, instant death. You just die. So I just back up here because I don't want to take any chances. And now this is probably the most dangerous phase with the Ustanak because... He has a freaking shotgun arm, and that shotgun arm, the spray is very concentrated, and it's it has significant range. So I see he's up there by the canteen. I shoot the canteen. He's not stunned long enough, but thankfully, he's just going to try to shoulder rush. He's by the canteen. I shoot that one. I went up to him, knocked him twice. He tries to kick me. He misses. So during this time, I'm just going to run around and I am going to, again, push these canteens off. He tries to tackle me there, but the invulnerability I have during that cutscene <laughs> helps me significantly. So as you can see, he's coming after me. So now I'm just going to jump down because I do not want to deal with that shotgun he has. He's by the canteen. I shoot it. He's taking a lot of damage right now, but when he runs like that, this is the perfect opportunity you want to use to push the rest of the canteens off. The checkpoint comes. He brings the spare. Now he's less dangerous because that shotgun he has, that shotgun arm he has is gone. So now he's going to be predictable. He's going to be like a close range brute, broody type character. Big damage, but predictable. So he can actually toss grenades. He tried to toss some there. I just get out of the way, because why not? And he tosses three. So he's just standing here for some strange reason. I get him stunned there for a little bit. He's not stunned too much. He tries to hit me with his big fancy arm. I stun him again. 
And now it's just all a matter of using the canteens against him. He tries to grab me, but he whiffs. Barely whiffs, should I say. So now I'm just going to run around and... I'm just going to take advantage of these canteens. Then after that, he takes his arm off. Two, three, four... He got stun lock. Okay, he roared. So one, two, three. <laughs> I dodged with the knife. Thankfully, Sherry's right here. She has my back. I got put in dying status. I try to roll away from him, but the camera. So now I'm gonna have to heal myself because I do not want to deal with him when he's like this. So I look around for any canteens. They're all used up. He tries to run into me. He misses. One. To, I missed the second shot. So when his arm is like this, when his arm is gone like that, you just want to run away from him. As you can see, he's trying to come after me. The AI is actively pursuing me. But as you can see, I'm just running away from him because I can. I'm not dealing with him at close range. He's too dangerous up close. Unless he is accurately stunned. So I have my sniper out now. And as you can see, with a relatively few amount of shots, we can completely level this guy. I mostly used pistol ammo and some sniper ammo, and he's already down for the count. How useful is that? Very useful. So coming up here, if you remember the regenerators from Resident Evil 4, they're back in a different flesh. Same concept, concept, different flesh. So I'm given a bunch of freaking... I'm just given a bunch of assault rifle ammo here. I have a lot of it, so I'm pretty much fine. So I'm going to use that for state spray, because why not? I'm going to have to cut here in about a minute, though. So, unfortunate as it is, you know, it happens. The 10-minute benchmark is kind of... It's kind of a refresher for me, because it allows me to go back and take breaks, or just do parts over again, and, you know, helping a dying partner. B button or right bumper. Right bumper is really useful if you have a human partner. You can't do it on your partner. So, go after Derek Simmons. So, we have about 30 seconds left. Again, we can't run. I wish we could run while Hunnigan is talking to us. But we can't. And we still can't run. Because it's supposed to be suspenseful. Somebody gets attacked by... What the heck is that? It looks like a rubbery creature. So, we come up here... And I'll pause it now. So if anybody liked this part, comment, rate, favorite, subscribe. And I'll see you all later.